Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Before we begin the service, what I want you to do is I want you to look around yourself uh, and make eye contact with the folks who are here. Okay. Because this is this is a holy place, not because of the building that we're in, not because of the building that we're in, but because we are the body of Christ. Whoever you are, you are here. You are carrying the divine image within you, and you also are sharing the divine image with those who have gathered with us. We are the church. This is the building. We come together to be the church, the body of Christ. Let's worship God. and join me in the call to worship. And just to let you know, the last thing that we're going to do in the call to worship, the last one is we're going to sing. Okay. So I need to hear you. Um, we come together from a world that's torn apart by disunion, a world that humans destroyed with environmental indifference and a world within our souls that's filled with doubt, uncertainty, and fear. We come together as one people, seeking understanding, assurance, and peace. Be with us in this hour, ministering to our deepest needs, and fill us with the sure knowledge of your love, which is forever.
prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom and the power and the glory to Him. Amen. Please join me in Hymn 623. Walk this morning with my mind. Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind. And I stayed on Jesus. Woke up this morning with my mind. And I Stayed on Jesus. Woke up this morning with my mind. I was stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Can't hate your neighbor in your mind. If you keep it stayed on Jesus. Can't hate your neighbor in your mind. If you keep it stayed. La paz de Dios sea contigo. May the priests of Christ be with you. And Okay, I'm going to put you to work now. I'm going to ask you to take out the Pew Bible, and I'm going to ask you to turn to page 683. 683. I should say it's really good to see all of you. It's good to be back in the church again. Marsh and I have been away for a while, and uh, to come home is wonderful. We're going to read this. It says in the bullet, we're going to do it unison-wise, but I'm going to suggest we do it responsibly, responsively. Uh, I will read the stuff that runs out to the edge. For instance, in the first one, it would be, oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, and then you would respond, make known his deeds among the peoples. We'll read the first six verses. And then we'll flip over the page, and we we will begin again on the uh, eleven. Uh, I'm sorry, the sixteenth verse, and continue doing it that way. We'll take time now, okay? I have six nine one. Six nine one. I guess we have different style Bibles here. The Psalm one hundred five. I have it on six ninety one. Okay, Psalm one hundred five is what we're looking for. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> but I did find. Okay, let's do it in the Bible. In the Bible. And again, we'll read responsibly. 
I'll give thanks to the Lord along his name. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Glory in his na holy name. Seek the Lord and his strength. Remember the wonderful works he has done. O offspring of his servant Abraham. And now we'll go to the 16th verse. When he summoned famine against the land, he had sent a man ahead of them. His feet were hurt with fetters until what he had said came to pass. The king sent and released him. He made him lord of his house to instruct his officials at his pleasure. Amen and praise the Lord. And then the Matthew reading is one of the more uh, familiar of the uh, passages, uh, miracle stories in the Gospels. Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him, go on ahead of him to the other side, and while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. And later that night, he was alone there. And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because of the wind against it. And shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. They said, it's a ghost, as they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It's I. Don't be afraid. And Peter replied, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come. And then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. <laughs> you have little faith. Why did you doubt? And when he climbed into the boat, the wind died down. And then those who were in the boat worshipped him. They said, truly you are the son of God. The reading. May we understand. This week, as I sat at my computer and began preparing the meditation for use this morning, I reread the scripture about Peter and his walk on the water toward Jesus. And it was then that I had my mind take an unexpected turn. I'm reading about Peter walking on the water toward Jesus, and all of a sudden I heard my mother's voice just as clear as can be offer the admonition that she used to give to my brother and me when we went out to play. Our play usually was in the woods across the street from our house, down in towards the dingle and then the stream that was down on the bottom. It'd be an exaggeration, but not much of an exaggeration to say that every time my brother and I went out to play, mom's words were the same. Be careful. Don't get your feet wet. Be careful, don't get your feet wet. A month ago, as I read the scripture for the first time, as I began thinking about what it was that I would talk about this morning, 
the admonition of don't get in your feet what was nowhere in my mind in the conscious level. It must have been brewing back there somewhere, but it wasn't in the front. As I sat down at the computer and began typing the manuscript, however, those words were very much in the front. Don't get your feet wet. My memory is that uh, during my brother David's and my time in the woods and on our various adventures catching frogs or watching ducks or catching fish or just generally exploring, except for those times when we were especially trying to keep our feet wet, our feet, our feet dry, our feet didn't get wet. The only times that we really got into trouble was when we were so conscious about our feet that as we tried to step from hummock to hummock to get across the stream, we'd always end up just a little bit short and we'd have water halfway up to our knees. Or when we were walking along that path on the edge of the stream, narrow as it was, when we began worrying about slipping on the wet sandstone, that was always when we slipped on the wet sandstone. As long as we were focused on the frogs or the fish or the ducks or the adventures, generally we remained pretty dry. Mom said, don't let your feet get wet. Don't get your feet wet. The lesson I learned was when you try not to have your feet get wet, oftentimes they do. If you're not paying attention to them, but you've got your focus somewhere else, you generally remain dry. A similar message was taught to me by my boss at my first job. I worked at Friendly Ice Cream. And one day Stan Zeller was watching me as I was trying to carry two cups of coffee that were filled up the brim. And I was walking very carefully, watching the cups as they were splashing the coffee over the edge. And he said, Jim, he said, you know, if you just keep your eyes up, watch where you're going. The water, the coffee will stay in the cups. And he was exactly right. It was when you tried to concentrate on the cups that the hands shook and the coffee splashed. Well, I returned to the scripture. In the scripture today, we meet this wonderful, impetuous, so much like us, disciple Peter. In the company of the disciples, Peter is not one to remain quietly and anonymously in the background, but rather he is one who steps forward. He's not like Jude or Bartholomew or James, the son of Alphaeus, whose names are very unfamiliar to us. We know Peter's name. We've met him numbers of time. Peter is a person to be dealt with. Repeatedly, he is the one who boldly steps forward. He never bides his time. He's a leader who's in, who is comfortable taking the lead. We read the story of how with his eyes firmly set on Jesus, he says to Jesus, truly you are the Christ, the son of the living God, the first disciple to make such profestation. Spiritual moment. But it's followed by him taking his eye off Jesus and taking his eye and putting it on himself and saying, but Lord, don't go to Jerusalem. Don't go to Jerusalem, interposing his will on the one who he's just declared to be the son of God. At the time of his protestation, he's rising above the waves. But when he puts his eye on himself, he gets wet feet. Or again, with his eye and his heart ecstatic, from the time that he experienced Jesus go through the transformation on the mountain of transformation. Remember the story of how Jesus is in communication with Moses and Elijah? And the disciples, Peter, James, and John, are there and witness it. And our hearts are excited and they burn bright. Faithful, spiritual moment beyond expression. 
And then Peter, what does he say? Lord, it's good that you have us here with you. That jars me as I read that. The eye moves from him, Jesus, to me. The spiritual moment, while it's still burning, is doused by the water that splashes from his wet feet. Over and over again, we find Peter doing this. Right up until the end, Jesus is, he, Peter's at table with, uh, with uh, his disciples. And Jesus says to them, one of you is going to be, betray me. And rather than responding to the sense of horror that would have filled all the disciples with that, what's Peter's response? <laughs> not me. Surely not me. I'll stay with you even until death. I'm not going to deny you. And then, before they even catch their breath, Peter stand, finds himself standing in the courtyard of the high priest as the death sentence is given to Jesus. And people are saying to him, you're one of them, one of his disciples, right? No, I've never seen him. Don't know the man. But you sound like, no, not me. It must be somebody else. When his eye is on Jesus, he rises. When his eye turns to himself, his fears, his frailty, his brokenness, his feet get wet. Well, listen to the story again this morning as Peterson tells it in his book, The Message. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. You get that? He's walking toward Jesus, eye on the goal, walking toward Jesus, strong. But then the wind takes his attention and his smallness, his smallness, brings him into contact with an awareness of his vulnerability, his fear, his frailty. And what happens to him? Well, as Peterson says, he became frightened. He began to sink. Right? We have a picture through these gospel story, through this gospel story, I think of this, this juxtaposition about rising in strength as we keep our eye focused upon the goal and us floundering and failing as we turn our eye toward our fear. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I think it does for all of us, personally. I know it does for me. I think it does for us corporately as a church. I think it also does it to us corporately as a nation. When we focus upon our fear, our frailty, we get wet feet. When we focus upon the goal, we are able to rise up with strength. Sinking or rising. Walking toward failure. Walking towards faithfulness. That's what the story says to me. And then I look at my own personal life. I find myself wondering. I find myself wondering if my life would have been even richer if I hadn't compromised reaching my highest potential in order, reaching my highest potential, rather than seeking to protect myself from my fear of inadequacy by avoiding situations that I feared would show me to be too weak. I wonder how much over the years I have limited myself out of fear of failure rather than commitment 
to excellence. As a church. I wonder if our church would be more successful in facing this uncertain future. If we'd be more successful translating into action God's call to be a loving, compassionate, welcoming, and justice-seeking community. If we spent more time focused on what calls us, God calls us to do and be. Rather than fearing that our people and our financial resources are insufficient. What if we allowed ourselves to be drawn by our dream rather than hobbled by our fears? And I wonder if our country would be more hopeful and unified if we spent more time and energy focused on how to embody the values of equality of all humans, the rights of all to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. <clears throat> rather than as we tend to do, be worried about demographic changes and shifting power bases and the changing complexion of our nation's people. I find myself wondering how our nation would be different if we allowed ourselves to be bound by a common dream rather than fearful of a national nightmare. I conclude with this simple statement. We cannot make the world conform to our dreams. I recognize that. None of us have that ability. But we can, each of us, commit ourselves to nurturing our highest dreams for self, for church, and for nation. We can honor and serve faith more than fear. We can catch frogs and watch ducks and have adventures and care for each other and hold the highest ideals individually and corporately, confident that if we get feet wet, we can dry them off. Keeping our eye on the goal, dwelling in the close presence of Jesus and his call, that is where we find safety. That is where we find life. Taking our eyes and our attention off of the assurance offered by his presence and his promises. And turning to our eyes, turning our eyes upon ourselves and our fears. It will result in, I can guarantee you, it will result in our fears and our worries being realized. With eyes on the goal, we rise. With eyes on self and fears, our feet get wet. We sink and we're lost. It's really an easy choice. May we live it as easily. Amen. Sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher, not the teacher, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher, not the teacher, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's
Praise me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the stranger, not the neighbor, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the stranger, not the neighbor, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O Lord, standing in At this moment, we're going to take a moment and uh, try to respond to that need. Uh, we all come with burdens in our hearts and in our minds. And uh, I'm going to ask if there are any here that have concerns or joys that you wish to share. Uh, please feel free to do so, uh, concluding by say, uh, gracious God, and then we'll respond to hear our prayer. Are there any prayer concerns that any people here have this day? Yes, Jeff. Yeah, just the joy of uh, watching people either quietly or overtly uh, serving this church and the bake sale yesterday, uh, uh, various committees that do their quiet work. I give thanks for that and uh, God with love. Yeah. Go I'd like to give. It's a, I'd like to give a prayer of celebration or thankfulness for Ken LeGrow for jumping in the river when actually the grandson, great grandson of one of our beloved pastors in this church, Reverend Ted Castle, uh, when Christopher went in after his dog and got swept uh, over the dam in Barnstead. And mm. Ken was the first one there and jumped in his boat and helped orchestrate all, a response that saved Christopher. And um, and Ken was recognized by the town at Old Home Day yesterday. Wonderful. So I proudly uh, claim this as one of our own. <laughs> yeah. um, and oh yes, and the policeman that was there is Mitch Cookingham, also from, from yeah. our little church. And you know, I love that Christopher unthinkingly on some level loved this dog so much that he jumped right in the brink. But Ken and, and Mitch were, were there to help pull him out. So uh, thank you, God, and God of love. Hear our prayer. I have a prayer of concern within my family, which is kind of tearing us apart. Um, on my mother's side of the family, we've always been very close cousins and all having reunions every few years. My mom is the last one of her family that's left. And we plan to have a reunion, but there's a rift between two cousins. Half of them aren't coming. My mother is refusing to go. Mm. And this is killing me. Because of brothers and sisters. And because of this rift. It's scaring people apart. Uh, it was always a joyous occasion. And now we're all at the end of what to do about it. So I have to go talk to my mother this week. I just ask for prayers that I find the right words so that this whole work can be stopped because it's not worth it. It really is. It's a lot of anger and resentment, and it needs to go away. Right. 
like to give thanks um, for your continued prayers for my son as he uh, continues so just a couple months into his own um, freedom. He's doing well and uh, probably will continue to do well throughout the year. And I just want to thank everyone for their prayers. And I'd also like to ask for your prayers for my mother and I. We're doing fine, but we need them. Gracious God. And I will start with us saying prayer to the people of Hawaii and Maui who have lost everything that they ever had. And prayers to the people who are going over there to help and to, to search for survivors. And Help them with everything. Bring goods that they need, food, water, clothing. It's it's just horrendous. I was driving yesterday and I couldn't imagine what this place would look like without all the houses and everything and everything gone. So hear our prayer, God of love. Gracious God, hear our prayer. I'll ask for continuing prayers for my brother and his wife. David continues to uh, be in a nursing home. And it looks like he has a change of nursing homes in front of him at this point. Uh, going through transitions are difficult for all. And we ask for uh, God's strength with uh, Carol and with David. And gracious God. I'd like to, are there other prayer concerns that people have? I'm going to suggest that, uh, let's do that, it's me, it's me, but let's say, let's, proper English would be, it is we, okay? It is we. So let's say, it's we, it's we, oh Lord. It's we, it's we, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's we, it's we, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Truly it is, O oh God, it is we. We are the ones who are the broken. We are the ones who are broken amid the broken. We are the ones who find our faith failing, our confidence ebbing, and yet our hearts call us back into your presence. You who have calmed storms in nature, we ask to calm storms in every relationship which is going through times of trial. You who can speak peace and be still and have the storms obey. We ask you to again say peace and be still and have our hearts obey. The storms with rage, which rage within us, abate and peace be restored. We pray for this world in which we live, oh God, for lives that are destroyed by fires and lives that are destroyed by man's inhumanity to man and lives that are destroyed by the absolute despoilment of nature. Forgive us, oh God. Reclaim us and renew a right spirit within us. And you, O oh God, who led Abram from his country where he was born to the new land, and led him faithfully along a path that he did not understand, but a path which was being led by you. So also we ask, O oh God, that in our lives, when we are in the place of 
not knowing and truly understanding to believe that you still are with us. That your love still enfolds us and holds us. And your promise of peace is still alive for us. Gracious God, hear the prayers that we speak. But hear also the prayers that are too private and too close to our very cores to even form themselves in our minds, much less express themselves on our lips. Remind us, oh God, that your love is forever. Remind us, oh God, that you weep when we weep and that you rejoice when we rejoice. <clears throat> Receive our prayer. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. I was really moved by the first hymn that we sang, woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. It struck me that might be a pretty appropriate song for all of us to carry with us all the time. Not about waking up, but living our life. And part of the living that we do and part of the life that we have is to share, even as we have been shared with. And so the high point of our service, actually, is the ability to translate God's love into action for sisters and brothers near and far and to rededicate ourselves to the precious ministries of Almighty God. And that's why we present our offering. And that's why we're gonna present our offering right now. Thanks be to God.
praise God, my blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God, above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let us be together in prayer. Receive the gifts of our hands, the acts of our lives, and the love of our hearts as our offerings of gratitude. As we have received these as a blessing from you, may we also share them as a blessing to others. Amen. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved. When my cross is heavy, I shall not be moved. When my cross is heavy, I shall not be moved. Like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved When my burden's heavy, I shall not be moved When my burden's heavy, I shall not be moved Like a tree planted by the water I shall not be moved if my friends forsake me, I shall not be moved. If my friends forsake me, I shall not be moved. Like a tree planted by the water, I shall not be moved. Brothers and sisters, we are blessed. Beyond imagination, we are blessed by the love of Christ, by being part of Christ's eternal family, by being alive in this mysterious, wonderful, glorious world. We have been blessed that we might be a blessing. May we fulfill that calling. May the peace of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the love of Christ lead us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank our worship reader today, Barbara Brown, graphic design and production by Emily, our guest preacher, the lovely meditation, Jim Christensen. Thank you very much. Uh, this week we have meditation on Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m., Bible study Wednesday at 10, and Sunday's worship will be in person and online with Reverend Gail Murphy. Um, Let's see some upcoming events. There's a vacation Bible school going on at the Congregational Church of Laconia, and it is August 15th through 17th from 9 to 1. Children entering grades 1 through 6 are welcome, and there is information about it in your monthly newsletter. The council will be, will be meeting on the 21st, and deacons are meeting on the 23rd. Uh, and if anyone else has an announcement, I will pass the microphone on. Back to Barb. Thank you. Um, I just want to let you know that yesterday was very successful at the um, farmer's market and Brian said at one day we made uh, $568 on the big sale. And the RIP account has $58 more dollars. Um, to be put into it. So that was very good. And I want to thank everyone who did the baking and donations and stuff. It really was 
very good. Um, and the four of us that were there started talking about the, the fair. And um, we decided that we would like to put a committee together for the fair because it's really too much for one person. Yeah. And um, so we're going to, uh, just a few of us are going to meet at, um, at yeah, Amy's house tomorrow at 11. Um, and just discuss, you know, how we think this should go and the different things that uh, Emily's going to get me the spreadsheets so we can see what worked, what didn't work, what things we can focus on. So instead of having many, many things, maybe we'll have a little fewer things and make more money at the things that we make money at. So if anyone would like to join us at a home, um, please just, you know, just let Amy know so she can have enough chicken salad for us to love herself. So. <laughs> All right. And I actually offered to chair the committee since I've been here for a while. And I really love the way the women's group had done it. So I'd like to uh, to, to set it up similar to the way they did. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, Barbara. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Wow, that's a big one. Um, I just wanted to also add on this week's schedule. It is in the bulletin that the youth and family outing group is meeting Wednesday, and we, um, those of us who want dinner together, meet at the Nolans at six, and then otherwise it's online at six thirty. Um, and since Amy's not here, I did want to remind people, I think probably next Sunday is the last Sunday. Because the next Sunday after that is September, right? Oh, yeah. oh okay. Anyway, um, 60 and 68 hours. Are all of you familiar with this program? Um, because Barnstead's now, I like it, we're working with Pittsfield on it. So it's a, it's a program that now serves both communities. And actually, it's headquartered over at the Early Head Start Program building in Pittsfield. And um, they, had, they serviced about 40 families last year on Friday afternoon. And um, they're actually, um, to sort of protect the anonymity of the families, they're actually delivering the products um, to the families' homes. So they're doing a wonderful job. So uh, you have an insert with a list of things that they need. Thank you. Yeah, in the interest of making our church uh, a little bit more portable as last year, we're having our outdoor service at Stora uh, Camp, the Boy Scout Reservation, on the 3rd of September. So there are flyers out, and you're all welcome to take one. We hope you can make it and spread the word, too. Invite family, friends, uh, whomever. Maybe we'll get our feet wet then. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little uh, a little unofficial um in that uh we haven't had any kind of meeting about it but we're looking at november 4th as the pumpkin and the pine and um my request would be everybody to keep your eyes open for like 33 gallon cups, whether clear or not, because cups are what keep the things from mice. We can actually keep stuff outside if you're waiting to um, have it there, but it has to be in plastic cups. So anybody that knows of any or has any extra, just bring them to the church. Um, and also as we're winding out through the season, there's a lot of garbage trails. Feel free to show up 10 minutes before the end. Find five beautiful items. Um, we definitely will need the items. And um, and I know that in previous years, that, that was one of the things that April was really good about doing is that she would go, <laughs> when they were closing out the art sales, and take it, take it off. So we are looking for those items. Um, and we will, as soon as I get started and talk with some of the other people who will be doing this. Um, <laughs> we'll have some more information about it. Um, the, the most pressing thing with the fair is the um, muscle. And there's not enough of it. And so the few people that are really putting in the muscle are getting really tired. 
And so I'm looking for some constructive ideas, um, whether we actually pay young people to come or whether we find volunteers. Um, I'm willing to create a sheet, but this up and down with the tables and the setup and the boxes, and then later on that week when somebody's coming and picking up the stuff, I can tell you it's too much work for me and it's too much for my mom. And so I need to have help. And frankly, I think a lot of us are a little tired. So I'd like to brainstorm on what we can do because this is a huge fundraiser and, and we need it. You know, we need the help and, and the muscle um, beforehand afterwards. And not just for those two hours is it, we need, it's like a week cleanup from the fair. 